Hello everyone. In this lecture, I want to talk about uh, social media analytics. More specifically, we'll talk about uh, how to use Twitter and R to perform social media analytics. Social media analytics is a very popular buzzword. You could have heard uh, many people are talking about this concept, especially in the marketing field, like the online sales and the digital marketing field. Social media analytics is a very good application of a fastest growing field called text mining in business analytics. Text mining is used some techniques to find the hidden factors in the user's textual data. For instance, tweets, Facebook posts, uh, Instagram posts, and so on. Before we talk about uh, social media analytics, Let's learn some uh, terminologies in text mining field. First, document. A collection of texts is called uh, a document in text mining or social media analytics. For instance, a tweet, a Facebook post are all examples of uh, documents. Remember, a document refers to a collection of uh, texts second terminology is term. Each word in a document is called a, a term. Third one is called a corpus. A corpus consists of uh, unique terms from uh, all documents in the textual data set. It's like uh, a dictionary. It covers all unique terms from uh, all documents in a textual data set. Notice that a corpus only consists of unique terms. A term could appear in many documents many times, but uh, it is only taken by corpus once. Let's use these concepts to answer some question. We have uh, two tweets. Good game tonight, yes. This is the first tweet. Second tweet is checking in, feeling good tonight. Use the concept we just learned to answer the following three questions. How many documents in this data set? How many terms? How many terms will be taken in the corpus? Let me give everybody about a minute to think about your answer, and then I will share the answers with everyone. The first two questions are easier, right? How many documents do we have in this data set? So we just count the number of tweets. We have two tweets, so we have two documents from a text mining perspective. How many terms do we have? We just count the number of words in these two documents, right? Let's count the first one. We have one, two, three, four, four words. So we have uh, four terms from the first uh, tweet. And then in the second tweet, we have one, two, three, four, five, five words. We have uh, five terms from the second tweet. Totally, we have uh, nine terms in this data set. The third question is a little challenging. How many terms will be taken in the corpus? As I just mentioned, a corpus consists of only unique terms. So use this concept to find out how many terms should be taken in the corpus. Think about for about 30 seconds. Let's use the definition of corpus to count the terms that will be taken in a corpus. First one, good game tonight, yes. Looks like we don't have a repeated terms in the first tweet. So let's take all four terms into corpus. Second, checking in. 
Is checking in unique? It is unique. So let's take these two terms, checking and in, into corpus. What about feeling? Feeling is unique, right? So let's take a feeling into corpus as well. What about the good in the second tweet? Is this good unique? No, because we already have a good from the first document. In the corpus, we already have a good. So the second good will not be taken by the corpus. What about tonight? This tonight is not unique because we already have a, a tonight from the first document. In the corpus, we already have a tonight. So the second tonight will not be taken in the corpus. Totally, we have uh, seven terms consisting of uh, the corpus. They are good, game, tonight, yes, checking, in, and the feeling. These are the terms consisting of uh, the corpus in our data set. Why do we need this information? We need to create something called a term document matrix. In this matrix, each column represents each document in the data set. We have uh, two tweets, right? So we should have two columns represent uh, each tweet. Each row represents uh, the term from the corpus. The computer software will look up each term from the corpus in each document and count the frequency of each term in each document. For instance, checking. In the first tweet, we don't have the words checking, so we go zero under document one. We do have a checking in tweet two, so we give one under the cell in document two. Feeling. In the first tweet, we don't have the words feeling, so we give zero to the cell under document one. We do have a feeling in tweet 2, so we give 1 to document 2, and so on and so forth. Why do we need a term document matrix? If you have a little kids at home, when they come back from kindergarten, one day they will be very happy. They will tell you, I'm doing very well in my kindergarten today, so my teacher gave me a star or a flower to recognize my performance. The next day, they come back home even happier. They will tell you, I get two stars today. I'm doing better than yesterday. We use the same principle to count the frequency of uh, terms in each document in order to find out uh, the most frequently appeared terms in a document so that we can investigate what this document represents. This is how we change the textual data into numerical data that we are able to count. By investigating this numerical data, we are able to look at what each document's meaning is. This is the application of text mining. Social media analytics or Twitter analytics is built on top of this principle. First. We want to connect the R software with the Twitter developer account so that we can download a person's tweets to form a corpus. Then the R software will count the frequency of terms in the corpus in each tweet or in each document. By counting the frequencies, the R software is able to get the general meaning of each tweet. If a tweet has more words like glad, happy, pleasant, and so on, this means this user is happy when he or she posts this tweet. If a tweet has more words like bad, sad, frustrated, no, and so on, this means this user is not very happy or very frustrated when this user posts the tweets. By doing this, we are able to understand the meaning of each tweet. Next, I want to use an example to show everyone how to perform the Twitter analytics in R. Before we perform the analysis, we need to download and install a package called a TM. TM represents text mining. The purpose of TM package is to download data, clean data, and organize data 
so that we can perform more advanced analytics. First, let's download this package in the R software. In the mirror website list, choose USATX and then click OK. Now we have downloaded the TM package. Next time, if you want to use the TM package, you don't have to download the package again. You just need to use the library function to start this package. We are ready to perform Twitter analytics. It looks like uh, Mr. Donald Trump, the new president of the United States, likes to use Twitter account a lot. So let's use his Twitter account as an example to perform the Twitter analysis. Before you perform the analysis, you want to start two packages. They are tweet R and R O auth. These two packages can help us to download tweets from our Twitter developer account into the R software. Let's copy these two packages and then paste them into the R software. Next, you want to make a connection with your Twitter developer account. If you haven't made the connection yet, I listed the video here. Please watch this video to see how you can make the connection. I already have the connection codes here, so I can copy and paste the codes here and then make the connection with my Twitter developer account. If you don't have the codes here, please watch the video I listed on this slide. Next, I want to get uh, tweets from uh, Mr. Trump's Twitter account. His Twitter account handle is real Donald Trump. So let's use this code and then download the most recent 200 tweets from uh, real Donald Trump. Let's take a look at the tweets. We want to type in get tweets. These are the most recent tweets Mr. Trump posted on his account. The next step is to clean data. Sometimes when you download the tweets, they have some special symbols like the dollar sign, like the at sign. We want to remove all of those special symbols from our data set. So we use the transformation codes. Let's copy its codes on this slide. And then run this codes in the R software. After the data cleans process, we want to build the term document matrix. Let's copy this code. And then we have the MyTDM term document matrix. By the way, the codes of uh, transformation and the uh, TD matrix are very standard. They are given by the R community. So we don't have to develop the codes again. Next, let's see the most frequently appeared terms in the matrix. Let's copy this code and then paste it into the R software. Like you can see, the most uh, frequently appeared terms in Donald Trump's Twitter account is America, Clinton, uh, Florida, Get, Going, Great, Hillary, and so on. These are the examples of uh, most frequently appeared terms. We can also perform some uh, more advanced analytics, like uh, creating a word cloud. Let me show everybody what a word cloud is. Let's copy the codes here and then paste them into the R software. This is something called a word cloud. The size of a word is dependent on the frequency of the word in the data set. The larger the size is, 
the more frequent the word appears in the data set. In the current word cloud, you can see the words with larger size are great, thank, I will. These words show that Mr. Trump has a very good mood after he won the election. You can also see some words like uh, Colorado, Florida, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, and so on. These are important states in his election. So he posted a lot of tweets about these states in his Twitter account. A word cloud is a very good data visualization tool. It can help the data user to get the analysis results in a very straightforward way. One point you need to pay attention to is a word cloud is dependent on the source data. If a person updates his uh, Twitter account, we download a new data set. The words with larger size will be different in the new word cloud.